All right, guys, welcome back. This is part two of our second example for the three moment equation. Uh, picking up right where we left off, we just found the expression uh, where we have two equations and two unknowns for the internal moments of B and C. And just a quick recap was what we did is we uh, had this beam up here. Um, it's a three span beam with a couple different loadings on it. So first we drew the simply supported bending moment diagrams that would be supporting those given loads. From there, we found out the, uh, you know, the the areas of these and their the distances of their centroids from the outsides when we're applying the three moment equation and then we applied the three moment equation twice across uh, span a b c and then the second time was across b c d and uh, that basically led us to here where we found this expression where we have two unknowns uh, two equations and two unknowns so i'm just going to solve this using a two by two augmented matrix you can use substitution if you want uh, but basically we're going to find that MB is equal to negative 71.833 and MC is equal to negative 78.667. And we already knew from before that MA was going to be equal to zero and also MD was going to be zero because those are just at the ends of spans. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna draw the actual free body diagram of each span with its applied loads and internal moments and internal shears, uh, basically sections just right before the supports. So when I do this, I draw on the shears in the positive senses and they're all unknown values, uh, matching the positive sign convention for beam bending. And then we already know that MB and MC are negative. So what I've done is I've actually drawn these on in the negative sense and then made it a positive value. So basically this is a negative moment when we're looking at this free body diagram with a virtual cut here. This would be a negative moment, and then if we look at this free body diagram, where we have a uh, we have a, a moment, internal moment going, uh, I guess, counterclockwise to the left of the virtual cut, then it also shows up as negative here. Um, and then same thing here, uh, the moment at MC was negative, so I've drawn them on in the negative sense. The moments on the ends are zero, so it doesn't really matter which way uh, which way you draw those. All right. So what we want to do now is we just want to do the sum of moments. Um, about some point for each of these to basically find uh, one of the shears and then we'll do sum of forces in the y direction to find the other shears. So for the first section here, uh, for span AB, we're gonna find that VB1 is equal to negative 32.183 kilonewtons. So that negative sign indicates that it's actually going up or we're actually experiencing a negative internal shear, right? Because it's opposite that positive sign convention. So then when we, uh, when we go to draw the shear force diagram, at this point, the shear force on the shear force diagram is actually going to be negative 32.183 kilonewtons. Now, because this is actually going up, then the force balance in the y direction is 50 going down, 32.183 going up. So VA has to be 17.817 kilonewtons. And because this is drawn in the positive sense, when we get a positive value for this, this means that the shear is actually positive. And again, so when we draw the shear force diagram in the next video, it's going to be starting at positive 17.815, basically just on the left-hand side of this span AB. All right, so we do the same thing for the second span. We take the sum of moments. Uh, let's do the sum of moments about B. We're gonna find that VC1 is equal to negative 15.683 kilonewtons. So this negative sign indicates that it's going opposite of the way we drew it. So for the force balance in the y direction, we have 50 going down, we have 15.683 going up. So VB2 is going to be equal to 34.317. And we're gonna do this one more time for span CD. So we're gonna take the sum of moments about C. And we're gonna find that VD is equal to negative 42.133 kilonewtons. So if that's going up, then we have 100 kilonewtons pressing down from the distributed load, right? 10 times 10, and it's passing through that centroid at, uh, at five meters. Um, so we have 100 going down, we have 42.133 going up. So the shear at C is going to be equal to positive 57.867 kilonewtons, just to the right of point C. All right, so now we know the internal shear and the internal moment at the very edge of each span. And that's enough information for us to be able to draw the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, and then solve for the reactions. So I'm gonna pause the video here um, and then join me in the third video, the final video for this problem. And we're gonna go over just exactly that stuff.